Welcome to Two Projects. In this video, we are going to explain the project Enhanced DDoS Detection Using Machine Learning. Introduction DDoS attacks flood websites or networks with excessive traffic, slowing or disabling them. Attackers coordinate multiple devices to disrupt online services. So, the primary goal of this project is to enhance the security of digital infrastructure. It achieves this goal by utilizing machine learning techniques to detect DDoS that is, distributed denial of service attacks effectively. The project is of paramount significance in the field of cyber security. With the increasing frequency and complexity of DDoS attacks, there is a critical need for improved detection methods. Detecting DDoS attacks is crucial to maintain online services, protect data, prevent financial losses, uphold reputation, meet legal obligations, ensure network stability and hinder security attacks amongst increasing threats. Traditional DDoS detection methods like rate-based and signature-based approaches suffer from limitations such as false positives, inability to detect new attacks, and manual threshold setting. They struggle to keep up with evolving cyber threats, necessitating more advanced and adaptive techniques. So, machine learning is a key part of this project. It helps analyze how data flows through networks and quickly detects unusual behavior. By using machine learning, the project can spot and react to cyber attacks faster and more accurately, making digital systems more secure. And we utilize the NSL KDD dataset, a widely respected dataset in cyber security research. This dataset helps us study and improve DDoS attack detection by providing realistic examples of network traffic. And the project's benefits extend to various stakeholders. Network administrators responsible for maintaining network integrity can use the project's outcomes to bolster their defense against DDoS attacks. Cyber security professionals gain valuable insights and methodologies for enhancing their security strategies. Lastly, organizations that rely on digital infrastructure and services benefit by safeguarding their online assets and ensuring uninterrupted services for their users. Objective of the project so, as I mentioned earlier, the project's main aim is to enhance digital security by detecting and countering distributed denial-of-service DDoS attacks effectively. DDoS attacks aim to disrupt online services and the project focuses on creating a system to identify and mitigate them. To achieve this, the project uses machine learning models. These models analyze network data, including the NSL KDD dataset, to accurately detect DDoS attacks. Machine learning helps the system learn from data patterns, improving detection compared to traditional methods. The project looks into making DDoS attack detection even better. We do this by trying out advanced methods that combine the strengths of different techniques. These methods work together to make our DDoS detection more accurate and reliable. And as an extension again, the project focuses on user interaction. It aims to create a user-friendly front-end interface using the Flask framework. This interface will allow users such as network administrators and cyber security professionals to interact with the system easily. Users can input data, monitor network security and receive alerts related to potential DDoS attacks through this interface, making the system more accessible and practical. Requirements needed to execute this project are hardware requirements, operating system of Windows, processor of i5 and above, RAM of 8GB and above, hard disk of 25GB and above. Software requirements needed are Anaconda 3 and Visual Studio Community version. Now we'll discuss the flow of work. The first step is importing required packages. This step involves importing required libraries and packages like NumPy and Pandas for data manipulation, sklearn for machine learning and data preprocessing, and matplotlib c1 for data visualization. The second step is exploring the dataset. In this step, we employ exploratory data analysis and feature correlation analysis to better understand the NSL KDD dataset. These techniques help reveal data distributions, outliers, and relationships between variables, aiding in subsequent data processing and model building. The third step is data processing. In this step, to ensure the quality of our data, we clean it by removing duplicate records and addressing any inconsistencies or missing values. This step prepares the dataset for analysis. The fourth step is visualization using C1 and Matplotlib. In this step, we employ C1 and Matplotlib to create visual charts and graphs facilitating a better understanding of dataset characteristics. The next step is label encoding using label encoder. In this step, we employ a label encoder to convert categorical labels into numerical values, enabling machine learning models to work with them effectively. The next step is feature selection. 
Here we determine which dataset attributes will serve as input and the target variable. We use techniques like correlation and mutual information to identify the most relevant features and then append these selected features to X and the target column to Y for model training and prediction. The next step is train and test split. In this step, we segregate the dataset into training and testing subsets. The training subset is used for model learning while the testing subset evaluates the model's performance on new data. The next step is training and building the model. We will develop and evaluate various machine learning models in this project. The first model used is Random Forest. Random Forest is an ensemble learning technique that builds multiple decision trees and combines their predictions to improve accuracy. It is effective in capturing complex relationships in data and is commonly used in classification tasks like DDoS detection. The next algorithm built is Logistic Regression. Logistic Regression is a simple yet powerful classification algorithm used to model the probability of a binary outcome. In this context, it can be applied to distinguish between normal network traffic and DDoS attacks. The next model is KNN, that is K-Nearest Neighbors. KNN is a non-parametric classification algorithm that classifies data points based on their proximity to other data points. It can be useful in identifying patterns in network traffic data and categorizing it as normal or indicative of a DDoS attack. And in the next step, that is extension phase, a voting classifier and static classifier were created by combining predictions from multiple models for improved accuracy. Additionally, a user-friendly flask-based frontend with authentication was developed. So we employ the pre-processed dataset to train previously mentioned machine learning models. These models learn data patterns and relationships. Subsequently, we evaluate model performance on a separate test dataset employing metrics like accuracy, precision, recall, and F-score to assess their effectiveness in DDoS attack detection. This evaluation step helps ensure the models are accurate and reliable for real-world use. And the next step is Flask Framework with SQLite for sign-up and sign-in. In this step, we integrate user registration and login functionalities into the Flask framework. Users can sign up by providing their information and subsequently, they can securely log in using their credentials. This enhances system security and allows for personalized user experiences. So, after signing in, users provide input through the front-end interface, which include parameters required for DDoS attack prediction. Later, the inputted data undergoes data preparation. The pre-processed input is fed into our trained models and the models make predictions regarding DDoS attacks based on the input data. And results are presented to the user through the front-end interface. So this is the horizontal bar graph comparing accuracies of different algorithms. In this graph on x-axis I have accuracy scores and on y-axis I have algorithm names. So accuracy measures the overall correctness of predictions showing the percentage of correctly classified instances. And this is F-score comparison graph. In this graph on x-axis, I have F-scores and on y-axis, I have algorithm names. So F-score combines precision and recall into a single metric, balancing accuracy and completeness in predictions. This is precision comparison graph. In this graph on x-axis, I have precision scores and on y-axis, I have algorithm names. So precision measures the accuracy of positive predictions, indicating how many predicted positives were actually correct. And this is recall comparison graph. In this graph on x-axis, I have recall scores and on y-axis, I have algorithm names. So recall measures the ability to identify all relevant instances showing how many actual positives were correctly predicted. So we can see all the models are doing well. Execution of the project. To execute this project, first we need to open the code folder which contains the project source code files. So this is dataset folder in which I have required dataset on which we will train the models. This is static folder. This folder consists of files related to CSS, JavaScript and Bootstrap files. This is templates folder. This folder contains all the HTML pages used in the project. It typically includes files like index.html, about.html, etc. which represent different pages of the website. This is app.py file. This .py file contains the information related to frontend logic. It includes code written in Python that handles server-side operations such as processing user requests, interacting with the database, and generating dynamic content to be rendered in the HTML templates. And these are model files which contain algorithm information. These files will be loaded into the project during runtime.
This is notebook.ipynb file. This is a Jupyter notebook file which contains a combination of code, graphs and outputs all in one place. It allows the users to write and execute code in individual cells, making it a popular choice for data science. And this is signup.db file. This file is the database file used to store user information. Now copy the path of the code folder from the address bar of the file explorer. I'm copying it and open the anaconda prompt. Use the cd command followed by a space and paste the copied path and hit the enter button. So this command is used to change the current directory to the code folders path. Now compile the app.py file using the command python space app.py. So I'm typing python space app.py and hit the enter button. So this script, this command will execute the python script and perform a runtime check for any syntax errors or logical issues. And after running the app.py file, the Flask framework will host the application locally at the default address localhost and port, unless configured differently. Now copy the local link provided by the framework, I'm copying it and paste it into any web browser. I prefer Chrome. After pasting it, hit the enter button. So the home page of the project has been displayed in the browser. This is the front end built using Flask framework. So here we can see a sign up link, click on it. So if you are new users, we have to register first. Fill in all these details and click on sign up button to register. And if we already have an account, we can directly click on sign in link here to log in. So as I already have an account, I'm clicking on sign in link. So here we have to give our credentials, username and password. and click on sign in button. So it has redirected us to the DDoS detection page and here we have to fill in all these parameters now. So the service, it indicates the network service or protocol used in a connection. So I'm entering a value here. The next one is flag. Flag represents the status or state of a network connection. I'm giving it as 24. And the next two parameters are SRC bytes and DST bytes. So these measure the bytes transmitted from source to destination and vice versa. So SRC bytes would be 9 and DST bytes would be 340. The next one is count. Count represents the number of connections with the same attributes. I am giving it as 362. The next one is error rate. Error rate measures the rate of source site connection errors. So I'm giving it as 41. The next one is same SRV rate. So it indicates the rate of connections to the same services. I'm giving it as 0. The next one is different SRV rate. So it measures the rate of connections to different services. I'm giving it as 1. The next one is DST host SRV count. It represents the number of services available on the destination host. So I'm giving it as 0. The next one is DST host same SRV rate. So it indicates the rate of connections to the same service at the destination. I'm giving it as 255. The next one is DST host different SRV rate. So it measures the rate of connections to different services at the destination. I'm giving it as 1. The next one is DST host error rate. So it calculates the rate of destination host site connection errors. So I'm giving it as zero. Now click on predict button. So it has detected an attack here. So the type of attack is DDoS. Now click on home link. So we will fill another set of parameters here. So the service this time would be 51061. The flag would be 60. SRC bytes would be 5. DST bytes would be 0. Count would be 0. Serial rate would be 5. SR same SRV rate would be 1. Different SRV rate would be 0 0.6. 
DST host SRV count would be 0.4. DST host same SRV rate would be 57. DST host different SRV rate would be 0.22. And DST host error rate would be 0.02. Now click on predict button. So here we can see there is no attack detected and it is normal. So for the provided parameters it has predicted it as normal. Now click on sign out. So the conclusion here is the project makes digital systems safer by better detecting DDoS attacks ensuring that online services stay up and digital assets are protected. We use different machine learning models like K-nearest neighbors, logistic regression and random forest to find and respond to DDoS attacks effectively. And we improve accuracy a lot by using special techniques like voting classifier and stacking classifier. They combine the predictions of multiple models to make our system stronger and more reliable. And this project shows how machine learning can enhance security by detecting DDoS attacks effectively. And simple models especially have proven to be very accurate and dependable. And many people benefit from this project including organizations, network admins, cyber security experts and end users. It makes online services more reliable and secure for everyone. Thank you for watching video. For more projects please visit our website www.trueprojects.in. For updates on latest project videos, please visit True Projects YouTube channel and subscribe.